Welcome back to Return to Play. I'm Brandon Hodnett, your host. I'm joined today by Jacinta Fernandez Bruff, calling in from Madrid. Um, we are just here to talk about her time at Swarthmore and what she's been doing since we last saw her on the field. Jacinta, thank you so much for joining me on the show today. Thank you for having me. Jacinta, so let's go back to um, this past season. You, you know, you were expecting to be on the field your sophomore year playing at Swarthmore. What was it like for you finding out that there wouldn't be any games back in, you know, fall of 2020? Um, not, not fun. Um, I think, well, actually, I remember for the longest time it was, it was really weird, but I sort of accepted that classes were going to be online and that we probably weren't, wouldn't be going back in person. But for the longest time, I was like, no, no, the season will still be on. We'll, def we'll definitely be playing. They'll find a way. We'll definitely be playing. Um, so when they, when it was officially announced that, the season was suspended I think that's well it sounds ridiculous but when, for me it was like okay like we're really really not having a the academic year that we're that we're used to next year um so obviously it was wasn't great um but also given everything that was going on at that moment in time sports wasn't the you know the most important thing <laughs> at that moment exactly and refresh my memory did you did you sit out this past year or were you still enrolled at Swarthmore? What did you end up deciding to do after finals? So I, I took a leave of absence for the whole year. So I wasn't enrolled at all the past two semesters. So then let's talk about what did you, what did you do during your leave of absence? What kind of things did you find to do? Um, I guess, where did you spend most of that time? What did you do for, did you, uh, you know, pick up an internship or work? What kind of things were you involved with? So I'm an international student at SWAT. I'm from England. Um, so at that time, actually, football was still, um, teams were still playing in England. So I was really hoping, given our season had been cancelled, that I'd be able to go back to England, um, maybe do an internship online and try and play for a team there. And so that's what I was planning to do. And I let my coach know. And he actually forwarded me an email he just got from this guy in Spain, who um, is based in the south near Malaga. And it's this club that for several years, they'd had several men's teams and they were looking to start a women's team that year. And as part of their recruitment, they were looking to recruit some US college players. Mm. And given that our season had just been um, canceled, I was like, this is perfect. Um, so I applied online, I sent them a, a highlight reel um, and got accepted. Um, so I wound up playing for this team called um, FC Malaga City in the South of Spain for a year. Wonderful. And can you tell us a little bit more about that experience playing with uh, FCMC? Um, it was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Um, so they're in the fourth division in Spain on the women's side, which is the lowest division. Um, so because they were a new team and starting out. And it was actually mostly an American team, to be completely honest. We had two or three Spanish players. Um, I was from England. Um, another girl's from Guatemala. Um, but everyone else was mostly American. Um, and we all, actually, we all lived in the same house um, and we trained every day. So training five days a week, we play one game on the weekend and then usually get one game off. Um, normally, um, so the league we were in wasn't the highest level, I had to say. Um, so we would, during regular league play, we did win most of our games, but the goal of the entire season was to try and win promotion to the third division. So once we got into the playoff rounds, games got a lot, a lot harder. Um, unfortunately, we didn't have the greatest end to our season. Um, still hurts a little, but we got knocked out in the semi-final rounds to Granada's B team. Hmm. Um, so actually, if we had made it through to the finals, two teams get promoted each year. So we would have gone up. Wow. Um, so that was, yeah, a bit of a painful one, unfortunately. But, you know, proud we made it all the way to the semi-finals for sure. How did the style of soccer compared to what you were used to having played at Swarthmore for a year like was you know is the game played differently in the in that league or in Europe or what were you experiencing completely different yeah. I have to say is that I'm a central midfielder mm -hmm. and I absolutely fell in love with the way the Spanish play football um I think I mean I think it's the the best form of football to be honest it's very very different from America very possession based mm -hmm. the idea is that you keep the ball because if you have the ball you don't have to defend and everything's sort of centered around that um, you've got their outside backs 
uh, encouraged to go up the field. Like if you're an outside back that doesn't get two or three crosses in during a game, you're not doing it right. You're expected to be overlapping with the wingers, overloading one side, overloading the other side. Um, you don't, long balls are almost non-existent. Right. Um, like if you, if you play a long ball, chances are your coach is like, why, why are you giving the ball away? It's very much like, let's control it. Let's get into their final third. Let's get the ball out wide, cross it into the box and let's finish off crosses. Um, and yeah, I, I, it's very fast. It's very one, two touch, um, not as much individual dribbling. Um, it's very much, there's more emphasis on playing as a team and less sort of moments of individual brilliance. Um, hmm. It's also less physical, I will say, than the US style, which took a minute to get used to. I had um, several fouls during the first couple of games. Um, but yeah, no, I love, I love the way the Spanish play football. Oh, that's great. What, so what kind of formation were you guys playing? We usually played in a 4-3-3. Okay. Um, a couple of times we did a, we play, we went, it sounds weird. It was almost like a 3-6-1, but hmm. we went three at the back four midfielders and then one strike, one strike on top of that. I know a lot of, a lot of people that we'll be talking to had a hard time finding places to train and places to play and just, you know, finding ways to stay in shape with everything closing. Um, but I, I imagine, you know, you said you were training five days a week. Did you have any issues with having access to the facilities that you needed to um, during this past year? Yeah, I mean, it was obviously tricky with COVID. We were very lucky. I think where we were, the province we were in, in Spain, the restrictions were light enough that we were able to train. Um, and obviously we were quite strict because the team lived together. We could very much be, us and our coaches were sort of a bubble and we didn't mix with a lot of people outside of that. Um, so we did have access to pitches for most of the time. There were a couple of weeks here and there where sort of everything was suspended until COVID rates went down again. A couple of matches were postponed or canceled. Um, so we wound up at the end of the season, actually, there was about a month where we were playing two matches every week to make up for some that we'd missed earlier on. But given everything that was happening, it was, yeah, mostly a normal season or as close as you could get, which I was very happy and thankful for. So were you able to still keep in touch with your teammates from Swarthmore and kind of be involved in any team Zoom activities or anything like that while you were away? There are a couple of friends that I that I tried to call semi-regularly with. Um, I know the team did a couple of Zoom calls. Unfortunately, given the time difference, right. it's about 3 a.m. here, so I didn't quite make them. Yeah. But we also have a summer email chain that's just got going again, so it's been really nice hearing, you know, just snippets of what everyone's been up to. And obviously really looking forward to seeing them all again in preseason. Yeah, absolutely. What's that moment going to be like for you in uh, middle of August when you're back on campus surrounded by your teammates? Oh, it's going to be weird. It's been so long. It's been it's been a year, honestly, since I've seen any of them. But no, it's going to be great. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing everyone, to being back at SWAT, back on our fields, and also just meeting all the new players. I mean, about almost 50% of our team now I've never met. Um, so just getting to know everyone and how we play together as well. Um, but really, really looking forward to it. Oh, well, that'll be really exciting. You're going into your sophomore year, so I guess you haven't officially declared a major yet. What do you intend on studying at SWAT or majoring in? Um, not completely sure. I'm interested in political science and economics, um, so I think I'll probably wind up majoring in one of those. Um, I'm also really interested in um, computer science, so would love to minor in that, but not quite sure how I'll combine all those three just yet. Have you had any classes so far that you really enjoyed at Swarthmore? Um, I was lucky enough to get into the um, Israeli-Palestinian mm -hmm. course my first year, um, which includes a trip um, to Israel-Palestine over the winter break. So that was definitely one that stands out. Um, really, really interesting class. Heavy class, but really interesting. Um, and very glad I took that one. Do you, do you have any... Uh predictions or anything about how the year will go for the women's soccer team at Swarthmore or any uh any hopes or expectations um I mean more of the same I mean when I came in my freshman year they had just come off winning a conference um championship so I'd love to love if we can be in the running for maybe winning another one this year we also made NCAA playoffs so I'm really hoping that we'll be back there again this season Thanks for listening to this episode of the Swarthmore Athletics Podcast. If you like what you heard, please subscribe, leave us a five-star review, and share it with your friends.